they made a few suggestions. Uh, one of the places was called Parachi, which is a series of islands off the coast of Rio. And uh, and we were like, oh, that sounds beautiful. Yeah, he's like, it's not too far. And he goes, you know what? I'll go with you. I'll take you guys there. So Rebecca and I jumped in his car, and we yeah. all spent time together. Yeah. And we, yeah, and then uh, and then we we became partners. I mean, you know, investigating the Virginia case. He'd been investigating since 2006 already, yeah. because as a Brazilian, he remembers the case when he was a kid, and so he was incredibly passionate about it. So, so were you? Uh, Marco, were you a like an I mean like a MUFON type of investigator, whatever Brazil has? Yes, like look like a researcher. Do you know? Because when I saw this uh, the, on the news, the Virginia case in 1996, I just had a 11 years old at the time, so I got shocked. Do you know by the story? And I felt in my heart that I would love to go investigate this case. So I met James in 2011, and I had the opportunity. To start a work with him and some projects, you know, for the Virginia case. So we we did uh, the, all the research for the last ten years, and I'm always uh, I was talking to James about it, the the cases, and he was telling me something how to do it. And so, well, we went we went together in 2012 with that cheesy TV show. Oh yeah. We only we, we got made some contacts there. Yeah. And then we went back in 2013, 2014. Yeah, 13. 13? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And and went, found more witnesses. And then he just kept plowing. He just kept going, thank God. And then none of it made it into the phenomenon, which was then called 701. I just couldn't seem to squeeze it in. It, it just it, you know, it just wasn't happening. And I knew that he was probably gonna be pretty upset when he found out that none of the Virginia material ended up in the phenomenon. Oh. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Then I then I said, you know what? We need to do a documentary just on this case, yeah. which was kind of our dream to do it together. You know. Yeah. And so I went back um, for how, a, how long were you there? Well, I was there for a month uh, in two in twenty no, last year. The last year was like for a month. Yeah, yeah, for a month. Yeah. And then before that, we were like I said, yeah. Before that, it was two thousand and thirteen. Thirteen, two thousand twelve. Yeah. Eleven. Yeah. 12, yeah. 11. yeah. Yeah, and and we always joke because when we get together, we want to go hunting for witnesses. I mean, we were we're knocking on doors. Yeah, we're going in the town square and just asking oh. random strangers. No joke, man. We we oh, yeah. and we always say magic happens when we work together, right? Yeah. Well, I think that for for me for the film, um, when you were standing out in the square with the sign, yes, and all those people were coming up to you and telling you about you know what they yeah. saw, whatever it was great. Uh, I'm right now. I'm in. Can I stand? We're Yes, yeah, I'm in Vermont. You don't have to stay in the city, though. <laughs> <laughs> We're in Vermont. We're in Vermont. In I'm a barn. James, James Fox in a barn, and it's a beautiful barn. I eight, wish I had a barn like this. Eight, 1805. 1805. This is our new office space. This is our new studio. This and is where we're going to turn out a documentary every 18 months. That's my goal. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And uh, Marco, last name is Leo. 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 Yes. And I forgot to announce our uh, we all, we had our wonderful blogger Charles Lear do the blog this week on Vargina, and it's called the name of it is UFOs and Creatures Reported in Vargina, Brazil. Um, and I uh, I hope you get a chance to read through that. It was posted, and uh, he did a really good job with that uh, blog. And back here, let's see. Here we go. Um, I'm sorry. I'm trying to run like. These oh, cameras and everything. Line. And I wish I had closed out a few windows. Here we go. We're back to you over here. So uh, behind you, yes, is, is like a storyboard. Yes. Ah, I yeah, and the edit room. I don't know if you could, your cameras. Yeah, really, can't really really cameras it. up. But there's a glass windows, and then the actual edit room is inside. Okay. There. So let's point to the edit, edit room. Right yeah, over that's there. that's yeah. where the magic happens. Yeah. But yeah. from that edit room, we can look back and see we mapped out the entire film before we started oh. editing. Oh. And it's not exactly as it went down, but it's close, yeah. believe it or not. Yeah. yeah. And we did the whole film in segments, like meeting with the mayor. Um, oh, yeah. That was this good. witness, yeah. this other witness, the girls, the three girls that saw the creature. We did them all yeah. in segments. Yeah. And then Mark, Marco and I went to a cafe not far from here and put it together on paper. 
Uh, really? Because I kept saying to Marco, yeah. we wanted to escalate and escalate. So we didn't necessarily do it in chronological order in the way that you filmed it. But um, but it was a very good technique. And I was uh, really proud when I stitched it together, finally, how how well it actually worked. We only shuff shuffled a couple things around. But that's that's how we did it. That just trimmed it down and trimmed it down. And um, I think it was like two weeks ago, we were sitting here watching with, with, with another, actually my other partner, Boris, his wife. And, and uh, you know, I edited the movie and I'm sitting there, sitting there like on the edge of my seat. And she says something, points out something. And I said, shh, because I was so, like the second oh, half for me, I was just on the edge of my seat. I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute, this has got to be a good sign. Well, I'm like riveting on my own. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you like, look at this I think stuff, we're sitting on, uh, on dynamite on this one. I really do. I really do. And, you know, uh, one of the things I, you think about is the, the creatures. I want to talk about all that. But I don't know if both of you want to talk about in a nutshell, because a lot of people are not familiar with this case. I heard little bits and pieces of it over the years, but I never really looked into it. And then I was lucky enough to see your screener and like, oh, my goodness. I don't think anyone out there is ever going to watch that and say it nothing happened yeah i mean the way everything fits together but which one or, or both of you both of you or back and forth who wants to lay it out for the listening audience right you could then tell tell them as, as a brazilian and a researcher tell just give a a brief description of the case <laughs> yeah so uh, you have to do it in english backwards yeah, yeah. maybe you better no, yeah no. oh my god <laughs> no, no, my english okay i'll try okay uh in 2000 um 1996, January 13th of 1996, we had a report from a witness that he saw a, look like a ship. Uh, the ship has had a problem and some smoke came out. From like a the, big cigar. Yeah, like a big, big cigar. Yeah. yeah, and then, yeah, he was a, he witnessed uh, like this ship was uh falling down yeah right? it looks like it was going to crash and yeah. it was in distress yeah mm -hmm. and then he he saw and but he never thought that it was a ufo you know he thought that it was a, a conventional airplane small airplane so he went to take it out uh, to hell uh because he thought that there was some people inside so when he arrived he saw all the crash like all the pieces of the look like aluminium uh, yeah. And uh, all was all in the grass, scattered the grass. Scattered sounds like, the sounds like Roswell a little bit. When yeah, you, you know the debris. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, yeah. And then he, and then like maybe four to five minutes later, the uh, army trucks came from the other side of this field. We call it's a farm actually. We call Fazenda Maiolini, Maiolini Farm, and uh, and he. He reported that the the military came to him, and uh, they were like uh, some militaries got off the trucks and they were picking up some pieces. And one military spe especially came to him and point his gun and say, "Oh, get out of here! Get out! Go away! Go away!" You know? Did they have to drop the pieces? I mean, did they? Yeah. Did anyone he, get away with anything? Yeah. Uh, no. And he, he had it, uh, one piece in his hand. That's yeah. what he told so us. It was incredibly light. And and when he crumpled it up, it took shape again. Just like yeah. the alleged Roswell. Yeah. And this guy gave one brief testimony in 1996 to a guy, Claudio Covo and Mirajana yeah. Rodriguez, two yes. very prominent UFO Brazilian researchers. And then he went just gone for the better part of 26 years. Marco tracked him down. I remember talking with Marco about this in 2013 and said, we've got to find this guy. Like, we've got to find the crash, the UFO crash witness. That's yeah. everything. That links potentially the creatures that, you know, clearly were seen in the town in broad daylight to the UFO, right? Mm -hmm. And so Marco tracked him down, what, a year or two ago? Yeah, like 2018. Uh, me and my partners, I have two partners, which was investigated with me in Brazil, uh, John Marcel and Jordan Masbuch. So we were looking for the all the witness from this case. So we had a very hard time to find them. So we, uh, our other friend, uh, Paulo Pilon, he, he uh, reached him out, so we found. And 
we just went to talk to him and he told us um, like the same story, kind of the same story that he, he used to tell in 1996, you know, and, uh, and then the, the thing is, uh, there's another couple uh, which we call farmers, or, farmers mm -hmm. yeah, Oralina and Orico. Uh, they probably saw, like, in the same day as Carlos, um, this the same form of the same shape of this object. They described the same thing, two inches. There was about, theirs was what, two o'clock in the morning? Yeah, one o'clock. One o'clock in the morning, in the morning and, he, and he saw it crash at around five something a.m. We don't know definitively that it was the same craft, but we're everyone's quite confident that it was the same craft. It's described the exact same thing. Yeah. The gash in the side, the smoke coming out the back, the same shape. We called it micro microonibus. Yeah, micro a school bus yeah. or cigar. Yeah. And um makes you wonder, like, let's just say this thing came from wherever wherever it came from. Of mm. uh, what makes something like this happen where it crashes? You know, I mean this is speculative. But how how could something like wherever it came from get here and then have a gash in the side? Mm -hmm. I mean, don't you think that? I mean, I think that's really bizarre. Yeah, unless it was shot at in, in subspace. Ah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who wow. knows? But it definitely had a gash in the side. All the witnesses said that it had a huge gash in the side, and white smoke billowing out the back. Amazing. And it was in distress. The way it was flying, it was in distress. Yeah. It was not going to last long. Wow. Yeah. Uh, really something. And so. All right, so then uh, time go. Was this like a day or two when people saw this, the creatures afterwards, or what happened? A week. A week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in the uh, town of Virginia, was it what, 15, 17 miles away? Yeah, 17 to 18 miles away. Nobody knows exactly how the creatures got, whether they, they exited from a, a skate pod or there's a river that connects the two sites, from the crash site to the, the site where the creatures were seen seven days later and captured. Um, that's all speculation. People don't just don't know like how they got there a week later. Um, but anyway, yeah. So yeah, and then uh, the January twenty, the twentieth. Uh, so um, some locals from the neighborhood, which he calls Jardim and Daddy, uh, they saw uh, right in the morning, like around ten o'clock. Some locals reported. Uh, they saw some strange creature in some, um, in some like brush, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, they called the the service, like the firemen, the police officers, and the firemen, the fi fire brigade, brigade, brigade. Uh, They're connected to the military because it's different in yeah. in Brazil. The firemen are actually part of the military, so uh, if you're yep. in the fire department, you're connected to the military because that's different in, in Brazil than oh, yeah. in the United States, yeah. yeah. So um, one thing that really, really fascinated me, and I'm trying to uh, find a, mm. a depiction online, I can't really find something right now, but the description of what they were seeing, the creatures, and and first of all, um, so let's talk about when the young girls, three young, I think there were three young girls, maybe one was a little older, yeah. but um, they were walking in some like, a, not an abandoned area, but what, yeah, it was actually was uh, very near from the first capture. So the first capture in January 20 uh, was by uh, who did was the, um, the uh, firemen. So they found the, this creature and they did the first capture and then with they, a net. Yeah, with, with a net. Mm -hmm. And then they, oh, gave, they gave the creature for the army uh, right in the morning of January 20. So and then the same day in through 3.30 uh, in the afternoon, uh, the uh, the three girls was walking in through this field. Take a little shortcut home. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And then the, uh, Liliani was a little further, and she saw uh, this really strange creature, and the, her sisters, uh, Valkyria and Katya, Xavier, which was another friend of them. Mm -hmm. The uh, two sisters and a friend. Yeah. Katya was 21, Liliani was 16, and Volkiria was 14 years old. And yeah. it was broad daylight. Yep. Yeah. And then they saw this creature, and uh, they never thought that it was an alien because they they actually they didn't know what was an alien. They yeah. just described yeah. it like a devil. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you hear you hear a lot of people say basically the same thing. They they have no idea, and the first thing they think of 
is you know evil, satanic, or or, or whatever. And this yeah. this sort of did, but I, I think it's amazing about the odor and that these that the odor stuck with these people. They're all saying Everybody. the same thing. They yeah. can't get it out of their nostrils. Yeah. One woman is rinsing with alcohol yeah. and her nostrils trying to get this smell uh, out. I, I gotta say one thing quickly that I neglected to say earlier on, and that is that I didn't believe this case when I first heard about it. Mm -hmm. I was making out of the blue yeah. with a guy, uh, Boris and Tim Coleman. And um, Tim had told me about it, I think in the late nineties. And, uh, and I just completely dismissed it. And it's funny because I was making a documentary on UFOs when I heard about this case. And I just thought this is no way that that happened. And I completely dismissed it. And I actually laughed at my buddy, Tim, and I'll, get back to the relevance of this in a minute. And then fast forward probably 10 years, I was going to Brazil, maybe a little more than 10 years, I was going to Brazil to do this conference. And um, and I talked to a guy who's high up on the food chain, the entertainment industry, very respected guy. In fact, I'll just give his name, his name is Jeff Sagansky. And Jeff called and he's like, oh, you're going to Brazil, you gotta look into the Virginia case. And I was like, you mean with the live aliens walking around the town, I was all, Sure, Jeff, I'll look into it for you. Click. And I had zero intention of looking into it. So I'm not going to waste my time on that fantasy, right? There's no way that that happened. I mean, it was so, I can't believe how quickly I just missed it. And this was after my, my third film on UFOs. I'd done, I know what I saw at that point, right? Yeah. But to me, to have allegedly a UFO crash and live aliens walking around this town was like, you got to be kidding me. You know what I mean? And now here I am all these years later. And, I, you know, time is the most precious thing we have in life. Yeah. I would never waste years investigating something if I didn't think there was something to it. Yeah. And now I'm absolutely convinced. And not only am I convinced, I had a friend of mine who's been a pretty good. Uh, he, he is a very dear friend, highly skeptical of the whole subject matter. Mm -hmm. A lot less so recently. He watched it last week. Yeah. And he called me up and he said, holy bleep. <laughs> yeah. I think this is the best film you've ever done because I actually believe this case now. Yeah. And this is coming from, so I knew, I was like, I just wanted to, I, I just wanted your audience to know, I get if anyone out there is thinking there's no way this happened and yeah. I just can't believe this is too outlandish. James has lost his mind, you know? Mm -hmm. I get that, yeah, and I understand exactly how you how you would think that. But I just say, and I actually had a TV crew here interviewing me months ago. I just gotten back from Brazil, quite mainstream TV crew filming me in the other room over here, and they said, "Oh, we want to talk to you about your trip to Brazil on camera." And I said, "Yeah, no, I don't think so." They went, what do you mean you don't think so? I said, it's, "Your audience is going to think I'm nuts." Ah, uh, and yeah. so I said, "You need to see the film. You need to see the evidence, and then you can, you know." Draw your conclusion because if I just talk about it now, you're going to say, "All right, this guy's a wacko." And uh, yeah, yeah. So I just had to kind of let your audience know that this is not something that I would just blindly believe happened without extensive, you know, research and 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 multiple trips there and talking to the witnesses. And Mark and I, you know, um, um, yeah. I mean, and I think there were even times when you. We're questioning when oh, Uber 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 did a 180 uh, yes. and Pacini because those guys were the uh, the leading investigators. Yes, exactly. So and uh Claudio Nicov and Mark Pitchy the yes. four. Yes. So they they did this great um job in like back in the was covering anything, yes. Yes, it was covering and all the media was looking to this case because you know the girls very yes you know very authentic yeah oh yeah and 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 speaking of that let me just ask you this james when you're a few of these people wanted to be anonymous and did not want to be on camera yet you did the behind shot facing forward I, i'm trying not to give too much away yeah but when you are facing them in the eye and talking to them yes do you just feel like 100 percent? oh yeah no doubt absolutely 100 120 yeah. percent yeah oh my god yes and what he went through what we when we were in brazil on this on a military i'll refer to him as military x he's the most significant 
eyewitness yeah. in the history of the case by a long shot. His testimony will just blow your mind. And it did. he, yeah. yeah, he he was like, all the money in the world will not get me to come forward because he had met him like 10 months earlier, or 11 yes. months earlier, slowly just developing the relationship. The, 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 the military witness was suspecting that uh, that he was like in part of intelligence coming up, you know. So just to get a meeting with this guy took Marco a lot. And then when when I came into Virginia area, Marco was like, "Hey, you know, want to meet this fellow? We're yes. doing the movie together, blah blah." And he was like, "Okay, well, I'll, you know, spare you the details on how it eventually came down. I'll meet with a coffee yeah. or a drink." Yeah. And we drove hours into the night, and met with him, uh-huh. and looked him in the eyes, and yeah. talked to him for for several hours. Yeah. And then um, and then he was like, maybe, maybe I will, maybe I won't. He was waffling yeah. back and forth. Yeah. And it was like, a, I think it might have been a Sunday. It was a couple of days later. Maybe I'll do it Wednesday. Oh, I don't know. And I was, of course, thinking, oh, this guy's teetering. Yeah. You know, and it was like, a, I think it was like a Sunday. And I finally said, hey, man, let's do it right now. Yeah. Right exactly. now. Because yeah. yeah. I was thinking by the time Wednesday comes around, he's so going to change he, his mind. He might get yeah. a phone call. Yeah. He's going to sleep on it. He's going to change his mind. I mean, this guy was like teetering. Yeah, super paranoid. Yeah. Oh my God, super paranoid. And, and then it was like the, it was just it was right. It was the most tenuous situation of any interview I've ever done, in terms of like it could have fallen apart at any moment. We were driving hours to get to his location. We had no secure place to film. He was terrified of being seen with us with cameras. Like that was going to destroy him. He was so paranoid. Now let me ask you this: Did anyone <clears throat> say something to you? like off the record or off air, not being recorded. And they say, I don't want to say that. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, so oh, yeah. Marco and I had confirmation. We had a level of confirmation that nobody, I mean, I don't know anybody else has had. We, we interviewed Jose Carlos Guerrero, yeah. who was a general, a brigadier, brigadier, brigadier yeah. of the Brazilian yeah. Air Force. And it was like 2013. Yeah. 2013. And he didn't want to talk about Virginia. didn't want to talk about Virginia. And then after the end of the interview, we talked about some pretty neat stuff. And he's kind of like speculated or gave a possible scenario of what would happen if something like that did happen. And he would kind of talk about that way. But after the cameras were off and I looked him in the eye and I said, I swear on my life, there are no recording devices, none of this. And please, we were both please, yes. just please, you know, did Virginia happen? And I wouldn't reveal this, he's dead now, but we have the meeting on camera. We don't have that part of the camera. We said, please, it happened. And he said, it happened. And so Mark and I were like, oh yeah, my gosh. It was amazing. It was so unbelievable, man. Wow. Two times, right? That kind of kept us both or, or you know, yeah. Yeah. that those kind of um, confirmations that are completely off the record, no recording devices whatsoever. Yeah. That kind of keeps you going. <laughs> Yeah, I remember that, that you were asking. I was you begging you. Like, yeah, I was, you I was on my hands and knees begging you. Yeah. I was actually looking at the boots. I said, "Oh, you're spending this very like this time, you know, and yes. money to come here to go for the skates." And then he decided to yeah. tell you about. And you, it. yeah, yeah. It's, so, Marco, how did you find these people? Are is probably not something you go on the internet to search someone. Yeah, no. And so how do you? Is it like through networking? Like, do yeah. you know this person that may know this person that may know this? Yeah, type like, of thing? like like a uh, field researcher researching. You yeah. know, like uh, I went to Virginia many times, many times, and I was I was talking to people, and they were connecting us. But I have these two very good partners, friends, that are John and Jordano. So we were looking into the whole uh, history about this case by Ubiracar and Pacacini. And we had all the names of the witness and we knew uh, like all the witness. So we we just reached out from the from this uh, witness. And, but it was very hard, you know, very hard to get all together and convincing them to yeah. come in the doctor. doctor. Yeah, the doctor. The doctor, X. doctor X. Yeah, yes. God, yes. that guy was like, yeah. for years he had a relationship with this guy. He wouldn't do it. He wouldn't do it. He wouldn't do it. He wouldn't do it. Yeah. And then finally, <clears throat> he gets uh, Dr. X is retired and he says, I'll do it, but you can't fill my face. 
You have to disguise my voice. And she gave us a photograph of it. These are all legitimate, bona fide um, witnesses. It's like none of these these witnesses are are um, what's the word I'm looking for that have been um, verified. These are not. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like these are legitimate um, witnesses. And, and and that guy's story talking about taking an X-ray of what was yeah. probably the alien. Like yeah. you know, yes. Yeah. And the smell and like yeah, let's, let's that's the doctor that worked on the military guy who died, Marco Trevisi, yeah. the doctor Cesario, the guy like and he had on camera talking about like, about like, you know, yeah. the guy he worked on. He's like I've never seen in prior twenty five years been a doctor, never prior to the incident and never after the incident. He's ever seen anything like it in his life. He said they were throwing every bit of antibiotics at this guy. And his immune system was shutting off. He was 23 years old, super duper healthy. Yes, he died uh, from he, he carried the bean. He carried the bean. He grabbed it with his own hands, and he put it on his lap in the back seat and took it to the uh, local hospital with a guy named Eric Lopes driving. Yeah, and and then he just became sick right away. Uh, what within a week? Yeah, he had this like, oily. Yeah, it was like he um, February 10th, he. He went to the, yeah, to the hospital. So he captured it on January twentieth, yeah, in the evening, yeah, yeah, during a major rainstorm. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then uh, February fifteenth, he admitted to the hospital. No, died. Yeah, he died. In okay, the, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so three, three, three weeks. weeks. Yeah, died yeah, very, very quickly. Yeah. And was did anyone else have any health issues? I know that people, you know, were talking about. And, and I really love it when you like you talk to this woman. I forget where she was or whatever, and described it. And everyone kind of says the same thing, sort of like between ammonia and sulfur, yeah. or maybe a mixture of the two. And oily and worst, skin and the worst smell, and, yeah. They, yeah. And, it would, and it would linger for days, days, days and days and days. Yes. Yeah. And they didn't yeah, they say they had to close it. something because of they just like a hospital or a part yeah, of Yeah, they could they, they had to shut off a wing of the hospital for a long time because the smell was so so bad it was unusable. They just did all this disinfecting and that didn't do it. <clears throat> um these must be Venusians. <laughs> <laughs> well you know I, I have to mention Dr. Roger Lear mm -hmm, for a moment mm, because mm. in two thousand and fourteen yeah. I'm gonna say uh we were doing uh, which was then kind of 701 uh, and in Los Angeles we're doing a series of shoots and I had just gone with the help of, of Randall Nickerson um, look got got the witness from Rua the 1994 uh, landing case and contact case in, in, in Zimbabwe Rua Zimbabwe aerial school and um, Dr. Lear, I mean, they were all coming in for interviews. And, and I was, uh, uh, you know, I did have Virginia on the back burner. Dr. Lear found out I was doing something on, on, on Virginia. My focus at the time was Rua. But I still was, you know, investigating that one as well. And he was just adamant to get on camera. Unfortunately, he didn't tell me I have cancer and I'm dying. Otherwise, I would have made it more of a priority. Yeah. But he did get me these tapes. And I'm kicking myself now that I didn't get a chance to ask him about specifics because mm. he traveled to Virginia in 2002 mm. and he did a bunch of great interviews. Yeah, so this is before the two leading Brazilian researchers, Pacchini and Uberajar Rodriguez, who's also a lawyer in the town of Virginia, did a 180. They did a 180. Either that or they just completely won't talk to anybody ever again. Mm. And that was in about 2005. Mm. Something like that, right after Uber Genre's book came out. And so anyway, I got these I got these tapes and then I made copies of them. I sent it back to Dr. Roger Lear and he died. Mm. <clears throat> so and I didn't even have a chance to even go through the tapes at the time. I was always so busy with other oh, things. Of course. But like, I don't know, a couple months ago, I'm like, Marco, I've got these tapes of Roger Lear's trip in 2002 and it was a treasure trove of gold because we had the participation he had the participation of the leading Brazilian researchers on camera talking about the case Ted showing us in great detail going to the fire department going to the backside of the humanitas hospital where the creatures were taken like all these amazing details yeah, right? and, uh, interviewing Marcus his wife me too. interviewing Marco Trevisi, Marco Trevisi the military police officer was deceased after allegedly capturing the picture an interview with her like um 
And then I also got his book and I was reading his book and there were details that I wish I could have, I really wish I could have gotten the opportunity to, to interview um, Dr. Lear because there were details in his book that were not taped because the book is basically a transcript of, of the tapes because I watched the tapes and I read the book. But there are some meetings that he was not allowed <clears throat> to have recording devices in and he details those meetings anonymously, the doctor from so-and-so uh, in, in his book. And subsequently, and I can tell you that the details in that book of an alleged encounter with two doctors that apparently worked on one of the live aliens. I'm not saying it's true or it's not true. According to Roger Lear, it happened. And I have no reason not to believe it because we know that one of them survived. One of the creatures was alive, one of them was dead. Do we know how long that one left? We know how long it went to Campinas alive, right? Yeah, that's what I said on the, on the footage. But, uh, there are other people, witnesses, that heard it making a sound like a bee. Yeah, this one's buzzing yeah, sound and yeah. crying when it was captured. This wasn't the first capture, mm -hmm. yeah. like a yes. baby crying or something, or an animal crying. Like a baby. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so, but anyway, so I, I wanted to, you know, acknowledge uh, Dr. Roger Lear. And if there's anybody yeah. out there that remembers Phil Serens, I believe his name is Phil Serens, who was in the room at this meeting with the doctors, Uba Najara, Uba Najara's son, and Dr. Roger Lear. Uh, Dr. Roger Lear is dead. Phil Saren they tracked him down. He's dead. So Phil Sarens and Roger Lear must have given detailed accounts to some people that he's close with because that meeting with the doctor, uh, if, if true, is the most extraordinary thing I've ever heard on the case. And that's the two doctors describing telepathic communication with the live being yes. in the hospital while it's in the hospital with a military blockade on the outside of the hospital room and a massive military presence during the time. Now, that's the account in Dr. Roger Lear's book. Mm -hmm. And I have no reason not to believe it, but I haven't had it verified by anybody in the room. And the people, Uber Jara and anybody else, Uber Jara said that Dr. Lear made that up. Of course, he would say that he's denying pretty much everything on the case now. So I don't know if his testimony is is, is still um, to be trustworthy. Mm -hmm. Even though I think his research is the best research on the case that anybody's done is Uber Jara. Oh, yeah. It's but unfortunately, he's done a 180, and I think somebody got to him. In fact, I think he wondered. Somebody he must have gotten to him. Must he's, have. Yeah. he's a really good friend of Peter, and um, he, he just said that he doesn't have proof like uh, ev some evidence to prove the case. Yeah, but that's not what he said before. Mm -hmm. It's not what yeah. he said on camera with Dr. Lear. Yeah, yeah. He no, said he, he, has the tapes, he has the proof before. Yeah. And now he's not saying that. Yeah. So. Wow, interesting. So let's talk about the witnesses. The witnesses from, they're all from all over. I mean, they're not in one central location. Was there ever a time that the witnesses could have all talked to each other? Like, were they ever in like a, a group where they could have like exchanged stories or do you think these are all like they never had contact with each yeah. other what do we know about that if i had one like inkling or even a zero 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 one percent chance of that happening i assume that i would have discounted their testimony i don't think so for not even not even a moment yeah not even like not even on the radar right yeah. so and, and and what is what i think is amazing is them basically all saying the same and, thing you know yeah, most right. of these witnesses didn't want to come forward don't want to come yeah. forward yeah. uh you know really haven't benefited in any way in fact quite the opposite it's had a really awful impact on most of their lives it seems like it has more than an awful impact like even and more being threatened yeah it seems like it's worse than what you normally hear about a case yeah. you know yeah. like is is brazil generally you know thinking that anything to do with aliens or UFOs or anything like that is just not to be talked about? No, because the, the Brazilian government, um, and I can let him comment on this as well, because we've been together for a couple of interviews with generals, both an army general, um, Uchoa, yes. and uh, Carlos, Jose Carlos Pereira, the brigadier, and they were both completely open about the topic of UFOs, huh. except that they're real. They're like, yeah, UFOs are real. This is their flight characteristics. They exhibit a, a flight uh, characteristics that are way beyond anything within conventional aircraft. That UFOs are real, they're under intelligence control and all that stuff. But when it came to Virginia, and I don't know, it's because you've, it's a very 
big difference between, you know, a, a crack that you're unable to identify and means on the ground, right? Yes. And, and crash recovered debris. And another thing that we learned beyond a shadow of doubt, every single witness we spoke to is that the Americans were involved. The Americans came yes. to Brazil. Yes. Even radar operators. And not in military weapons. uniforms. No, not in military uniforms. Civilian, like, well, yeah, but they were dress civilian. United States Air Force craft that landed in Campinas that took something on the 22nd of January. Yeah. So if if the Brazilian government or military uh, is fully transparent on the Virginia case, that's going to um, that's going to expose the U.S. involvement as well. And according to these witnesses, they've got a lot more now to hide. So. Um, there may be uh, a reason why the Brazilian Air Force, the Brazilian military has, has put the kibosh down on this particular case because it would expose the Americans as well. And why do you think Americans got involved in something like this? It's just speculation, but why would they, why would the military get involved in a Brazilian case? Well, I mean, the Americans are involved everywhere. So that I've learned firsthand, not from reading it out of a book. You know, and I could go. I could go on until your audience uh, eyes glazed over. But suffice to say that you know, from Tehran to Belgium to England to Australia to uh, Africa uh, to Brazil, there's always. And that's why when ATIP got announced on the front page of the New York Times in late 2017, I was like, "Well, that's great news, and that's really cool." I got some release some some some. some photographic evidence and videotape evidence, but this is nothing new to me because I've known every military, every witness I've talked to, primarily the better the case, the more likely that happened, that uh, the Americans were involved. So I knew they never stopped investigating and intimidating witnesses and collecting data. That, that That's happening all over the world. And I and I didn't just, I didn't believe it. I learned it from talking directly to these witnesses. They all said, yeah, the Americans came. Yeah, the Americans came. It's like, they all said that. It's like, really? In the 70s, in the 80s, in the 90s, like in the 2000s. So their investigation never stopped. And they have an uncanny ability. And this is just to my surprise as well. They have an uncanny ability to monitor these things going on all around the world. They always That's show up. If it's a good case, they will show up. Like, I was so too. I heard so it to. about it. The uh, American was involved in Yeah. After the he's been trying to get me to do something on this 1977 case, I guess it went on for like a year or more. Yes, more. I, the, they have got videotaped evidence yeah. or filmed, I guess it would have been filmed. Yes, the videotape didn't exist at the time of yeah. craft coming out of the Amazon, yeah, and close encounters of the third kind. And uh, that's something that we might at some point, Marco and I might, mm -hmm. might, might stick our teeth into. <laughs> well, I'm gonna have to hear a little more, more about it. <laughs> oh, it's, a, it's an <laughs> incredible case because we have all the Air Force, Brazilian Air Force force of which was involved and they took more than 400 pictures of these ufos uh we call the chupa chupa phenomenon and then uh and then the air force went to this small island in Clara, Polaris, to figure out and other uh cities around to figure out what was uh what's going on you know and uh, a lot of reports from the witness, like very simple people, uh, which saw the UFO and the UFO sent look like a, a light. And they were believing that uh, they were sucking the blood or something else. And uh, yeah, it's really incredible with a lot of many details. How do we know the Americans were involved? Because I heard from uh, the very good researchers uh, and uh, was a conversation by some of some. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me, but I'm just. Yeah, yeah and then uh, there's these researchers from Para. They found like a house, looked like was a, a astronaut, American astronaut, which was living in the area, and he wore, he wore like a, a spire. Mm. They were thinking. They think he was. Yeah, he mm. was a spire because he had very good boats, and people saw. When I mean, it wouldn't like, surprise me, it wouldn't surprise me one bit. Of course, they would be yeah. involved. And Jacques Vallée investigated, yeah. And Jacques Vallée, Bob yeah. Brad, and yeah, yeah. It's, it's anyway, Flores is another story altogether, but a fascinating case. I'm learning, I'm just learning about it, yeah. and it seems like there's definitely 
very significant evidence, in, photographic and, and, and filmed evidence. Yeah, and we have this document by the uh, Brazilian Air Force telling all they did all the- We touch on it very briefly in Moment of Contact mm -hmm. in the Varshini case. We do a snapshot history of some of the more prominent cases, just a, just a few, like five or six. Right. And the Ubatuba was one of them. Yes. Yeah, which is, that was like in the 50s or something like 57? that. 57? 57, yes. 57, yes. 57, so, yeah. 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 Which is, uh, wasn't that a crash? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I know we don't have to go in, into those details. Canina speech. Yeah. Canina <laughs> speech. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. The uh, I guess I want, as far as this particular case goes, um, was there, did you speak? I, I've sort of said this in a different way, but there, were there some off the record things that you really, really wanted to be able to share and just could, were not allowed to? Well, the most significant would be the brigadier, uh, which is, he, is that a general? Yeah, he was like a brigadier, yeah. the highest position of our Air Force. He, he used to uh, take care uh, of our aerospace defense, mm -hmm. like he was responsible for our security. Mm -hmm. some and he was communicating directly with the president. Or something. Yeah, he, he used to work directly with the president. Yeah, He's so like, he yeah. he confirmed for us completely off the record that's that the Virginia one. case happened. Yeah. Yeah. And he even said, so yeah, there's is. some things that if you want to stay alive, you don't talk about. Yes. Yes. Did he say that? Yeah, he really? says yeah. That it's an expression in like, Portuguese that I say. Uh, say it in Portuguese and then give us the English translation. Yeah, like, let's try. Um, Tem certas coisas que preservam a vida de um homem. Uma delas é ficar calado. That's what it means like uh, there's something that you can preserve a man's life. Is by keeping your mouth shut. Yeah, yeah, ah. something like that. Yeah. I get it. I get so it. So I remember when, when he said that you were you were like, oh like, my god. Like, oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. oh my god. So so James, getting back to uh let's see, we got the sun, we got the light right in somehow you moved a little bit or something. I'm not sure what's going on. I'll, I'll just use the other camera. Okay. Um, but, um, oh, yeah. Um, okay. So thank you. Yep. Try that again. How's that a little better? Towards it's light? worse. It's oh, worse. Really? <laughs> yeah, I think James, you were blocking the light. So I don't want to spend much time. We were at one time, but no, it's not. So good now. Why don't we shut that off? No, <laughs> no, no, bueno. That's good. That's no, a pretty no, critical no. light, isn't it? Yes, you're right. Turn it back yeah, on. <laughs> okay, all, right. all right. So I'll, I'll just use this camera for now. There we go. We'll figure something out. Uh, so getting back to the Air Force. You just see my silhouette. That's good. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's about it. Yeah. The, this in, in showing up in every country, I've, I've always wondered, you know, as as we went along, like. I can tell you the, the first time I heard it. Okay. You're going to have to move this over this oh, way. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm just thinking a, a couple of things. Yeah. Like so someone said to me in one of the shows, recently um well the if oh that's perfect what we did if the U, u.s air force is not getting involved in the uap like the navy is if, you know and and, that was and they Mellon. should be that's christopher mellon uh well maybe you mentioned that yes but yeah, other people have been yeah. speculating of course, too yeah and so but but they would have so much explaining to do mm -hmm. wouldn't they like if they said oh yeah there's something to these They've been quietly, you know, Project Blue Book, Blue, Blue Book closes in 1969, but it didn't really. I mean, yes, it did, but there's still investigations ongoing. There always has been. Mm -hmm. And it's through the Air Force. But in reality, my thoughts are, and yours can be totally different, but I still think that no one really knows what's going on. That's my own thoughts. Like, they may know more than we know, but they don't really know exactly what's going on. Well, what are your thoughts about that? Well, that, you know, I I firmly believe that they know it's going on yeah. and they have hard evidence to prove that it's going on. Yeah. They've got, I believe this, and you can criticize me for believing this, and I don't blame you one bit, but I believe that bodies and, and debris have been recovered. I didn't used to believe that. Yeah. I only believe that after sticking my teeth into this and really talking to witnesses and really having to set my own like uh, disbelief. I mean, I, I had a really hard time going from craft to the sky to beans on the ground. Let's just put it yes, I had a very. Tough I'm so does any skeptic. 
And all the stuff you say you can't make the jump to I aliens. I do right? not blame them yeah. one bit. I yeah. just all I can tell you is you don't have to believe anything that's coming out of my mouth, and I don't blame you if you don't. I really don't. <laughs> yeah. But I am convinced now that yeah. we have recovered debris and, and bodies. I'm just convinced of it. There's more evidence to, to suggest that we have than that we haven't. And but that doesn't mean they have all the answers. They don't know what their agenda is, where they come from, what do they want. Yeah. And I don't believe, honestly. But from the highest levels of people that I've talked to, and believe me, I'm asking, I'm one of the most curious people on the planet about this. I'm dying to know what's going on. Yeah. And I'm coming to the realization that I'm probably never going to know. Yeah. And that sucks. I know. I've said and that. Was so like I go after it, you know? And yeah. I'm really, I mean, I'm learning more and more, but the more I learn, the more I realize I don't, how much I don't know. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I feel comfortable talking about the things that I do know because I got a film coming out that'll back up everything I'm telling you right now. But um, yeah, I believe that, well, I'll, look, this is what I do believe, that the phenomenon is omnipresent. It's around us at all the time. Mm -hmm. It has the ability to manifest itself in a multitude of ways. And I've said this before, but it's just the best conclusion. Uh, it, it's omnipresent. And it and it and it can manifest itself in physically like nuts and bolts, but also telepathically or psychically. You know, I've talked to really like hardcore, pragmatic nuts and bolts witnesses, military guys that go, I don't want to tell you this. I don't know, what do you mean? You want to tell this? I don't I, I just I don't want to tell you this. It's like, well, <clears throat> you're not gonna I said, Well, just try me. And they say it communicated with me. And yeah. I've heard that so many times. Yeah. And so uh, there's that element of it as well. Um, but who they are, what they want, where they come from, I have no idea. And I don't think anybody does. Right. Talking about the telepathic, yeah. that, that really fascinates me because so many people say that yeah. a lot of people have said that, um, the message comes in about our planet, taking care of our planet or our planet is, you know, in trouble. Um, that type of thing I think is fascinating. But it doesn't um, take an alien to figure that one out. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's All true. you gotta do is yeah. open your eyes like that. <laughs> yeah. 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 But I mean, going way back, you know, I mean, yeah. going back, you know, years, of course, it's always been in the news, you know, what we're polluting or whatever. But still, that part, and um, and then, you know, I had, I had, I had this wonderful story. I'm not gonna, because my listeners have already heard it, but I'll tell you afterwards. But a, a, uh, this weird thing happened to this guy. He's a listener to the show and he contacted me and I totally believe what he's saying in this whole thing. But he said, I didn't want to say this, but it's, it said to me, don't worry, we're just observing you, mm -hmm. you know, that type of thing. And then everyone Tim Johnson told me that who was a, a, an airline pilot, a commercial airline pilot. I had a number of people, but that in particular, cause he didn't want to tell me. Yeah. But sorry. I didn't mean to. Yeah. Really so it just popped in his head, but yeah, everyone he was head. with, we're not here to yeah. harm you. Yes. What yeah. I do him. Yeah. Trick Johnson. You yeah. know exactly where it was, where I was standing when he said it. Yeah. And he didn't want to tell me because yeah. he knew how crazy it sounded. Yeah. And it yeah. is. It is. It is really amazing to think that someone communi can communicate like that. It's like this web of intelligence. It's like all interconnected. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think Edgar Mitchell was onto something with yeah. the Noetic Institute. Yeah. It's all connected. Yeah. The intelligence is all connected. Yeah, I think and it is. Yeah. 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 That's pretty, pretty amazing. I know we're, we're off the Vashina case a little bit, but that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> but I do want to, I don't think I've ever asked you this anytime I've ever talked to you. What made you decide to look in the topic of UFOs? I remember you were talking to your father when he was going to do your first film. And he said, don't do it. Or oh, you're crazy to do God. it. But, the level of resistance I got from my friends and family. <laughs> but wow. but in the beginning, what, what made you interested in this topic? I don't think I've ever asked you that question in the very beginning. Well, I had a sighting when I was 20 with my friend Lisa Reinhardt. And uh, she actually just, you know, we talked about it. We've talked about it over the years, but recently. You know, yeah. yeah. She talked about the telepathic communication that we had. That was what made it so unusual, is that we both were like, I don't know what the bleak that is, but whatever it is, I get the impression it knows we're looking at it. And I said, yeah, I feel the exact same thing. And so uh, I don't know if that had anything to do with, like, you know, five years, 
you know, well, three, four, five years later, which at the time when I was in my early 20s seemed like a long time, but now five years is nothing. Um, why I would suddenly be obsessed. I mean, I did have a friend of mine talk about, a, friend, a really good friend of mine from college, I mean, from high school, this guy, Renee Harris, and he was talking to me about, you know, Roswell. And I was like, you got to be kidding me, buddy. And I said, well, good high school friend of mine, I'm going to have to write him off because he's lost his marbles. <laughs> and then I, I, I did bring it up with a guy named Richard Van Sickle at a video production company that I was um, apprenticing with. Uh, and, and Richard was a very smart guy, man. They're like very mainstream, smart, you know, just, he goes, oh yeah, you haven't heard about Roswell? It was like in the early nineties, I don't know, mm -hmm. 94, 95, 94, you know, 93, 94. And I was like, no, I hadn't heard about Roswell. He goes, oh yeah, I mean, the military announced it. I mean, the military is the one that said it happened. And anyway, that got me kind of, and I went to a couple of conferences and I thought, wow, Maybe there is something to this. This seems like a pretty big story that's managed to slip between the cracks. Because people ask me, like, you know, what keeps you going, right? A, I'm very curious. But B, I feel like, wow, this one really did slip between the cracks. This is a big story, hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. I can't simply write off all these great, incredible witnesses. You know, of course, now, you know, now, no question, my mind's not a shadow of doubt. Yeah. Mind. It's all going on. Yeah. Um, what does it all mean? You know, I think if it's if it's even if it's a scary reality, um, it's 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 a reality. It's part of the bigger picture of, of who we are and, and and how we fit into the into the larger picture. And I think that's that's important, and that we yeah. should embrace the unknown and 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 and, 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 and see if we can figure some of it out. Because right. it's like you know, it's fascinating. It is. I mean, and then, and then, you know, we probably learn more about ourselves. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I was, uh, and I was ridiculed for so long. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about that. How did that? Oh God. People, I, I got, I got a poster in my office of me back in 2005, six, seven. And it says, you know, into the realm of ridicule, even though everybody ridicules it, James Fox is still out there looking for the, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. Because it was like, you know, that's just, that's how it was treated. Yeah, you know, but nobody's laughing me now, right? Because <laughs> you know, 2017 lots changed. Yeah, and do you think your your movie, the phenomenon, if 2017 never happened, that never came out the way it did, do you think it would have gotten anywhere near the attention? No, I, I believe you. I believe you. No, yeah, it would have gotten attention as yeah. did out of the blue, and I knew what I saw, but not yeah. like that. Yeah, it got mainstream attention. Yeah, like. Very mainstream. I mean, you know, we got written up and, you know, we got mentioned in like the New Yorker. And I mean, very mainstream, you know, publications that would never, ever comment on UFOs, ever. Right. 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 Yeah. And they're, it's funny now, actually, because I get calls from some of these people and, and I'm like, these guys are actually taking this stuff seriously. I think uh, Senator Harry Reid. Yes. Getting him. Yeah. On camera that was, was a great major boot. Thank you, thank you, George Knapp, by yeah. the way. Yeah. Um, that was because he's a household name. Yes. Whether you're a Democrat or Republican or whatever, the guy's a household name and he was yeah. Senate Majority Leader. Yeah. It's kind of a big deal. Yes. Having him confirm what we've all suspected all these years. Yeah. Uh, and then having the evidence uh, from the cockpit recordings of these UFOs. Yeah. And saying, yeah, this is legit military stuff. Mm -hmm. It's a big deal. It is. I had people contact me all over. Oh my God, James! Like skeptical family members were like, "Wow, my God, we were this. Maybe, maybe you were on this. You know." Well, that's good. Yeah. I like to hear that. And uh, yeah, I mean, people are coming. In, come, I mean, look, I couldn't believe. Was it last year? When right before the report came out, June twenty fourth, two thousand one. Right. Was that? Yeah, June thirtieth or whatever. June it was. something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. of twenty twenty one. With that preliminary assessment report. was supposed to be yeah. made public. Yes. And leading up to that, there were lots of articles, and Leslie Kane and Christopher Mell and Lou Elizondo. They talked about. I couldn't believe it was on a podcast as well as in print. They talked about recovered debris, right? Crash debris. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mainstream was talking about that. I that was, was really shocked. I was really shocked when I heard Lou oh, say shocked. that he, 
he was kind of put in a corner where he had to say mm. either yes or no that yeah. it might exist. Yeah. And uh, in that he said basically yes. Yeah. Uh, that that he does believe there was some crash materials recovered. Yeah. I believe he, I don't know exactly. You know, I'm paraphrasing. Mm. I don't know exactly what he said, but it's along those lines. And that is a big deal. Very, very big deal. And I and I I've talked about this before, but uh, you don't get that many moments in my career where I'm literally pinching myself and I've had a, a couple of those I bet. and, and, uh, and I can tell you all of them, but yeah. one in particular, I've, I've maybe, maybe four or five in my whole career. And I've been doing this 30 years now, 29 years. Yeah. Um, was when, and I didn't want to push Senator Reed too far. I mean, I just couldn't believe I was going to go to Senator Reed. Yeah. Starters. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you again, George Knapp. Yeah. <laughs> Did I say thank you? George Knapp, thank you. <laughs> but uh, I wasn't sure what his comfort level would be. And and so I, I just went kind of on the conservative side for the first part of it. And then I kind of would feel him out of it. And I'd push him a little further and a little further. Yeah. And then I think I got right up to the break of your comfort level. I just pushed yeah. that envelope a little bit more. And that's what I, I had talked about. The landing case that was allegedly filmed by yes by a crew of uh it was uh was it no, that was not Holland. Holland was 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 the 60 something 64. this was um edwards air force oh, yeah. okay and, uh cooper or cooper. right cooper did not was not a witness he right. he saw the film, film, the film yes he, he looked at the film yes he did yeah. he was a witness to the film for this he handed the film for the yeah. military military yeah. against the from washington of course never seen her crew again and i brought that story to the attention of Senator Reed, and Senator Reed finished, like finished what I was about to say. Oh, and they haven't just never seen her from ever again. That's yeah. what I said. Did you guys go after that stuff? And he said, "Yeah, we did." I said, "Well, why here?" And it kind of like tried to change the direction of the conversation. And I said, "Well, hold, hold on. Are you suggesting that there's evidence that hasn't seen a lot of day?" And that's when he takes it. That's the water found statement right there. Yeah, that was yeah. like yeah. for me. And I know I've talked about this, and some of you others have heard me say, it, but that was wow because. You could see, and it felt much like when you watch the cam when you watch the cameras rolling after the fact. It doesn't seem like this, like pregnant pause during that moment of taking a sip of water. But at the time, it was like, Ugh, you know, yeah. the air almost sucked out of the room. Yeah. And and I was like, okay, well, what's he gonna say? You know, and that's when I think he just said, "The heck with this." Yeah. He's like, yeah, I'm saying that most of the evidence hasn't seen one a day. And he well, was that type of guy too. He he's never had to. You never had to guess what that guy was thinking. Kind of a big deal yeah. to have that level yeah. of confirmation, and it frustrates me to see how you know the mainstream media has been playing catch up with this story. Hmm. And I'm like thinking, put me in the room with those congressmen and senators. I know the right questions to ask. They can't. Yeah. They can't be telling me China and Russia. I've been to China. I've been to Russia. Yeah. I've been with generals in both places. They're just as baffled by this phenomenon as we yeah. are. And that's just like, come on. Man. It is about the right questions, let's, too. Of course it's about the right questions, but you can't, yeah, obviously. Yeah. But it's like, you know, you can eliminate, you do the process of elimination, and that leads you with only one thing. We're not alone. Yeah, yeah. Someone asked me recently, I was being interviewed on. You just need to come out with it. Right. I was being, Get over it. someone said in your 10 years, uh, over 10 years of doing podcasts, um, what is the most profound thing that you've learned? And I basically said, is that there is actually really something going on. You know what I mean? Yeah. And your podcast is going on. Can you prove it? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> yeah. No, but, but again, it's like, and I've said this a few times on my show, it's like, I feel as though these 10 years in of doing this podcast, I have more questions and I know less about what it is. Um, I have ideas, but, and it's really, I'm wonderful. I've been a good over 500 people that I can hear different thoughts, but I still think that, I still think um, that it could be a combination of who knows. I don't think anybody says they've got the answers. Yeah, Ron. Doesn't have yeah. the answers. Right. I don't believe that for a minute. Yeah, I have been traveling around the globe, yeah, talking to witnesses, both military and civilian. Yeah, and I'm definitely getting the answers, and I'm not getting them. 
Well, let me ask you this, James, if you had to guess. So where are these guys get those answers from? Yeah. yeah. Pretty high level people. Yeah. In every kind of all over. Yeah. If, if you, you had to guess, guess, if you had to guess what these the objects are that are showing up in the sky, maybe crashing or whatever, would you think it would be extraterrestrial as I would say it's alien. Alien. Because yeah, they're alien from us. Yeah, they could be here. They could, they could be, be here. They, they, they could, could be here. They could be yes. time travelers. Yeah. They could be interplanetary. Yeah. I just don't know. Yeah. Or it could be all of the above. Yes. A mixture of all of the above. Or the universe. Yeah. Or like a whole thing. Yeah. That's so, right. yeah. So, yeah. So, I, 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 I love the camp that we don't know, and it could be all of the above. That's why, that's, I mean, you know. Um, yeah. yeah. Didn't you see, did, I, did I talk to you one time, um, James, when you said that you saw like a film and they wouldn't let you show it, but it was a crazy film? Yeah. Can you give any details about that? Sure. Yeah, I want to hear it. You mean the, the Chuck Clark one? I'm not sure, but I remember you talking about it. It's the best UFO footage I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's the, it's the holy grail footage. And I saw it with these eyes. Yeah. And I can tell you where it is and who has it. But you can't. I'll tell you. Chuck Clark has it. Okay. Chuck Clark wrote the end book on Area 51 back in the 90s. It's called the, the hit. I might have been the handbook on Area 51 S4 or something like that. Look it up. Chuck Clark on Google. All right. So is Chuck Clark still alive? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And uh, has any, is anyone trying? All right. Do you want to Yes. I want to. I want to hear this? Yes. Yeah. I'll say, I'll say, I'll say for this. So I was doing a, I was doing 15 years of denial back in the 90s. Mm -hmm. I was like 90, maybe 95, something like that at the time. I had just four years, I think. And uh, I was interviewing Chuck Park, who had set up like a double wide and had a uh, little alien, just out back near the little alien, the town of Rachel. Yes. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, yeah. well, you know, after the Bob Lazar revelations and all that stuff. Uh, I think Bob, Bob Lazar came out in 89 or something. It was like the early 90s, early to mid 90s. And I was interviewing um, Chuck Clark and uh, for my piece, an unrelated thing. Uh, he had had some observations. He could go to these, he was a very smart guy, he was an amateur astronomer. He was a former military guy and he could interpret the maps somehow and know the areas that the military didn't want you to go that there were a couple of little loopholes, little, like you could somehow jump from one, you know, you could get to vantage points and look down on the base with high power telescopes and cameras. And he was taking pictures of stealth and secret stuff. And he had a couple of incidents where he saw objects doing maneuvers that were impossible. And he talked about that. It was for my movie, 50 years ago. <clears throat> I had an ongoing relationship with him for a while, you know, because I was fascinated by the whole thing. And uh, one day he calls me up and he says, uh, hey, James. This Chuck. He says, um, I said, hey, what's going on? He goes, uh, I got something you need to see. And I said, okay, well, can you tell me more? He's like, no, but I will tell you this. When you see it, your jaw's going to hit the floor. Uh -huh. I said, that good? He goes, that good. So I jumped in my car in Northern California and I drove straight to Area 51, the Rachel Nevada. <laughs> what is that, eight hours? Tell I thought I'd say it was like 12 or 14. I okay. can't yeah. long drive. <laughs> and I drove all the way through the night. And I was like, I'm going to see what this guy's <laughs> got to show me. You know? yeah. And I get to this I get to this trailer. And I, I don't know, man. I think it was like, I, I couldn't tell you what time of day it was. I got to remember where it's this trailer. And uh, he's like, sit down. And I'm sitting down in front of a little TV set. He's got a VHF player. And uh, pops the tape in. Hits play. We didn't like say a whole lot prior to that. It's like, mm -hmm. and uh, it's these two guys on a road trip, and I'd get on those road trips. They got goofy music playing, and they're like, "Hey, you are posing next to the little alien, you know, inside the little alien, with goofing off and just goofing off, being kids on a road trip." Uh, and then um, they had music playing in the car, and then all of a sudden, the car stopped. They're on a dirt road. And they're stopped and they're filming and it looks like if i'm in the driver's seat and he's in the passenger seat 
it looks like someone took the camera and put it on the armrest in between the two, and it's not level. The camera's cocked just a little bit, a little bit. But it's just it's not level. I'm a camera guy, so you can see it. And uh, and they're screaming. It's filming the dashboard, the dash, the windscreen, the you know, all the knobs and the air conditioning and the radio. The radio is off. It's totally silent. And they're screaming at each other back and forth. And it sounded like they're trying to crawl under the seats. That's what it mm. sounded like. Okay. But they're not being filmed, so I don't know what they were doing. But that's what it sounded like. It's over the top of us. It's over the top of us. Get down. Get down. It's over the top of us. And all of a sudden, the inside of this car lights up like a Steven Spielberg movie. Okay? It was mm. like an orange, kind of an orange glow. What kind? Of, what time of day? Was it was it? dusk. It was dusk. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't light. Yeah. Dark, it wasn't light, it was mm-hmm. dusk. Mm-hmm. And it lights up this dashboard like like orangey light. And the whole cabin had this light inside. Mm-hmm. And here's the crazy part. The shadows on the inside of the car were doing this really fluid kind of motion where they were kind of just, you were like, what the hell? Like, what the hell? Guarantee you, you've never seen anything like it. Because... The only way that could happen is that above the car, there was a light source on a pendulum doing this kind of, but it wasn't like a consistent movement in the sense that it was like a pendulum yeah. where we go this yeah, way, like a clock and then back. Yeah. No, it was more inconsistent than that. It was like, it was like doing something like this, the light inside the car and they were freaking out. Okay. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Like I'm looking at Chuck and he's looking at me and I'm going, <laughs> What the hell is going on here? Then one of the guys, who's like 19, I'm told, according to Chuck, he's like, I'm getting out. I'm going to film this thing. And the guy is screaming at him not to get out of the car. And he gets out of the car anyway. And he... I don't know if he pants, but he gets out. He got the camera. And... 60 feet above the car not like the car the car is here he's standing here and the object is here okay like here he's filming up at the object so you can see you can see the bottom of the craft but you can also see the side and a little bit of the top of the craft okay mm-hmm. it was kind of like an angle i mean it was low you could have hit it in the rock okay and it's filming like this and it looked like the skin of this craft was alive wow. it looked like phosphorus like you see on a beach like it was glowing but there were no light sources right what color what, what like color? a yellowy orange uh-huh. and then if you take a pie like if you have a perfect disc like a, like a pie and you have like a long pizza knife and you very evenly cut the thing up but you didn't remove the pieces it had like darker scenes hmm. those they're perfectly symmetrical they're beautiful and the whole thing was glowing, and it was just wobbling like magic, right? Just like this. I swear to God, I swear on my life, if I saw this thing, okay? Wow. And it's going like this. And I'm like, this is the best footage I've ever seen, times a hundred million. Right? Yeah. I looked over at Chuck, and the kid who's filming it goes, "Oh my God!" And then the camera shut off. I think he said he might have even said the batteries were going out or something. But he goes, "The kid." The camera shuts off. He goes, he said exactly what I was saying in my head. Hmm. Oh, my God. Like, and he couldn't even say it. He was like, oh, my God. Like that. Yeah. And then, bam, roll. And I'm just going, Chuck, this is the holy grail. Like, oh, my God. Now, you got to in touch with the footage. He said that these kids had come and they had dinner or whatever at the little alien. And then they got off. They left. And then they came back. They went out to the black mailbox. Apparently, it was right around there. Mm-hmm. They came back over there freaking out. Oh, my God. You know, we didn't believe what we just saw. And we videotaped. So they showed Chuck, I guess, and Pat and whoever else was there at the time. And they let Chuck make a VHS tape. I mean, that, you know. So there are two. So two I said to Chuck, maybe. Chuck, I said, Chuck, I, I have to have this this footage. Yeah. Oh no! I promised them I wouldn't. You know, I said, well, money. You? Oh. 
Money. You think I didn't offer money? Are you kidding me? I didn't no, money. Money. Time, money but I could borrow the money. And I yeah. remember talking to people in, in New York. I was like, they're like, well, James, if this footage is real. Yeah, you can have 30 grand, you know, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Chuck said after uh, after about 10 years, and I'm the most tenacious person I think you'll ever meet, he said, if you ask me again, I'm never speaking to you. Oh, they went that far. And I asked him again. <laughs> and, and, and so Chuck wouldn't get back to me. I was calling him. I was tracking him out. I wrote letters. He wouldn't get back to me. Uh, so recently, and I can't really reveal too much of this, but recently I said, screw it. I'm talking about this, and I'm talking about it with his name. I've had yeah. Like, yeah. you know, this guy's going to die in his trailer with this footage. Yeah. Yeah, why? 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 Just because he, he gave him his word. I, I guess said, that's just, honorable, just but... put me in touch with the people who yeah. shot it. Let me at least talk to them. Yeah. He wouldn't do it. Why? He didn't say. So, I mentioned this about a year ago. Maybe a little longer. I don't know. A year and a half. When did the phenomenon come out? Late 2020. So mm -hmm. anyway, I mentioned it on the show. Yeah. This guy contacts me. He's like, I'm a I think he's probably the best guy song. He goes, I find him. Yes. Yeah. You want me to find Chuck? I say, yeah, find him. So keep my name out of the mix. Yeah. Because he won't talk to me. And so he found him. He did. Yes, he did. And he went to see Chuck in Arizona in the middle of nowhere. And Chuck showed him the footage. And he said, it's exactly as you described to James. However, the VHS tape is the, is degraded. Oh, no. It's brought out as well. So. Chuck says, tells the guy the name of the cameraman, the production company, who was at a TV uh, news station in Los Angeles, uh, who has who had made the VHS copy. I believe what he said made a VHS copy from the beta. I believe the beta, the beta SP for Chuck. I get in touch with George Napper at this time, and I said, George. <laughs> I said, you need, George and I had talked about what's the most amazing footage you've ever seen. It was, in fact, at the time when I interviewed George in um, in Las Vegas, when I interviewed Senator Aaron Reed. And so I told George about Ch you know, Chuck Clark. And George, George goes, oh. And the last thing that Chuck said to me when he said, I'll never talk to you again, is I don't even have the tape anymore. And I thought to myself, we don't have the team. Mm -hmm. How do you not have He's that? trying to get ready. Well, yeah. Yeah. So anyways, I, told, I told George Knapp about this. George goes, oh, yeah, I covered. He got raided by the feds. His huh? place got raided. I said, really? He goes, oh, yeah, I covered it for the local news. Yes. His place was raided. His his trailer was raided. Good. I did a story on it. I know Chuck well. Jeez. I said, well, Chuck, apparently... You know, at the time I didn't know that because I, you know, I hadn't made that announcement in public. I didn't know that Chuck still had the footage. And it, you know, so I called George and I started putting the pressure on him right after I found out that, that Chuck had the tape and Chuck was willing to show it. You know, and maybe he's like, so what I'm getting at here is that George was really busy. George Apple said, George is the best footage. I'm telling you, man, you've got to go after this. He goes, I'll go after it. And I don't know when George got busy, he didn't do it. And I pushed George hard. And George responded one time and sent me a text, like, back the bleep off. You know, not my wife. You know? And I was like, okay, I'll back off. And I'm just yeah. telling you, man, if you don't follow the speed, you're making a big mistake. Yeah. Well, the cameraman that transferred the beta tape died like a month later. Uh -huh. So now he's gone. Mm -hmm. So we went and contacted his place of work. And he's got to have that beta SP in a library somewhere. We contacted his son. His son didn't know. Any lead at all back to the original two? The beta SP? No, the two guys that filmed No. It. No. No. Um, yeah. Hey, but does Chuck? Hey, hey, do you think it, Chuck? It, it tears my heart out. Yeah. Do you think Chuck would be able to reach those people if he was? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Is it Chuck? I don't yeah. know. I yeah. don't know. So you think that tape was taken in the raid, most likely? No, it wasn't. Oh no, it was not. Because it was seen afterwards. Yes. Uh, 
Ah, yes. So it still exists. Yes, I know it exists. I, yeah. My friend just went and saw it, like, months ago. All right. So when you not listening to this, get on this. Well, unfortunately, the guy that gave Chuck is now dead. And he died literally like a month or two after I was telling George Knapp to go after it. Because George Knapp went after it and got his anger and it's still alive, but it got the high resolution quality from being SP, according to Chuck. Yeah. When you saw it, was it clear enough? It was clear. Oh my God, are you kidding me? Yeah. It was like brand new. And how about that? Was there any sound or anything? Or yeah, so what is the sound? They were screaming at each other. Oh, the sound of the raft? Yeah. You could hear it in Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Wow. And nothing when they were inside the car other than them yelling at each other. Yeah. I mean, it was quiet, man. It was eerily quiet. Yeah. Not even fuzzy. Nothing. It was magic. And I remember thinking when I looked at it, I said, this is why the witnesses that I've talked to are in lots of words. Because you've never seen anything like it. You have nothing to compare it to. Yeah. And the way it glowed, because yeah. you know, usually like a light source, like there's a light shining on something, but if the skin is alive, yeah. Like if the fabric of the crab is alive, which is what it looked like. Like a jellyfish. Like a jelly, yeah. Yeah, I mean you just looking at it, you're just speechless. I was speechless wow. when I saw that footage. Wow. And the fact that it's never seen by the day disgusts me. You know the yeah. my, my one real UFO. Oh, like that way. You know, shame on Chuck Clark, man. I mean, yeah. You know, it's like yeah. you're gonna keep the best evidence to yourself in your group in your house and not even try to get the people to come forward. Like, you know, yeah, it doesn't really make any sense. You know, I mean, it so makes you wonder. it's just like I've been. That's why, that's why, like a year ago, I said the hell with it. I'm talking about it now, yeah. openly. And I talked about it before. I don't know if I revealed his name or not, but anyway, you know. Or, you know, Chuck could have at least said why he didn't want to come forward. Yeah. Like, you know, just give me so much. Like, not, I won't talk to you again if you ask me. Why the hell did you show it? You know who I am. You know what I do. Exactly. You're going to show me that footage and say you can't have it? He you know, won't even make any effort for you to get access to it? Yeah. Zero? Yeah. Zero. Just let me talk to the people. That's all I wanted. If there was anything you if you had a chance to do everything all over again. I'd have grabbed that tape and ran out of there. <laughs> <laughs> I would have. <laughs> you don't know. Really, I would have that tape and I don't I would grab that tape and run out of there. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Because that doesn't belong to one person, that belongs to all of us. That's yeah. the best evidence I've ever seen. Times hundred million. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing even close. Yeah. I mean, imagine a disc in dusk that you can hit with a rock and several seconds long. This yeah. is not like something like there's no it's not like, oh, that could have been a stealth aircraft. No, no. This was sitting in one place, and it was doing this weird, like, very fluid. The way it, it was like this kind of thing. Like, it was like bobbing in the water. Yeah. You know? And probably nothing to do with area you want test equipment. Who the hell no. But I mean, well, it, maybe it was. But I'll tell you what, now, it was a flying saucer that defied physics and we stood it. Yeah. And didn't make any noise. And it was right 60, 70 feet off the ground, right there. Yeah. Well, okay. That's what I saw. Yeah. God, we'd all love to see that. All of us would love to see that. That's what that. I saw. Yeah. No, um, that tape exists. Yeah. Well, I'm glad I remembered to talk about that. Sorry, uh, I get really, yeah, that, yeah, that's the one that got away. Yeah. And I don't give and up it, easily. You can ask this guy. <laughs> you remember some of the witnesses that I want to go talk to? You're like, you're out of your mind. I'm not talking to that guy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> James. I do not give up easily. Come on. No. They told you I'm all Harry Gloves. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> Is that the guy with the gun? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. when I used to be in the car. Because it was kind of. Yeah, I think there's, there's video of you sitting in the car. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. I can said three times everyone hears about get shot <laughs> before you get out of the car. Well, no, I didn't. I didn't. I, you know, he said it very quickly, and I did not understand what was going on. Bala. I didn't know what Bala was. That's from the very <laughs> similar French, actually. But tell me the man is bad. Yeah, oh, right. <laughs> yeah, that's a crazy. That's a crazy. Yeah, scene. you said that's that the craziest scene I've ever shot. Yeah, ever been part of. Yeah, he said, "Oh, you something was on the two face. I could see the yeah. stress. I'll never forget." And why do you think he was so? They told him to shut his pile. Was why. Mm. No question. Yeah. Zero. So he was basically threatened. Oh my God! I look. I can't prove that, but yeah. it was written all over his face. Yeah. Are you kidding? All you had to do was say, "Hey guys, how you doing?" It didn't happen. This, this is a joke. It did a rap. Uh, uh. That is not what he said. 
and before you met, you didn't understand. Didn't ask him anything. Yeah. If you're here to talk about the ETs, I'm not going to talk. He's not going to talk. Hmm. Like, oh, okay. It's like the cops showed up at your house. Oh, there's no drugs in here, officer. Yeah. It's like, well, we didn't ask you about the drugs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know what right. I mean? Like, oh, yeah. there's no, nothing to see here, sir. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Marco, I just want to ask. Uh, I'll ask you the same question. We'll, we'll go back and forth between these things. But this, that, that footage thing. Oh man, that Crazy, is right? yeah. Uh, I, I really hope that we can all experience that someday. But I, I'm interested in how you got interested in the UFO topic in the oh, beginning. Yeah. So how did all that happen with you? Uh, happened like when I was a child. Yeah. Uh, like this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so the 1996 uh, Virginia case was fascinating. What, was that the Virginia case that got yes. you interested in the whole time? Yeah, actually I watched it and I was like, wow, what? You know, I really want to know more about it. So, okay, so this is, I had 11 years old. So when I had 14 years old, like three years later, I was with my friends, we went to play a, a soccer game, and we we saw, like, my friends saw, like, an object, like a triangle, and he, they were doing, he was doing, like, this, and uh, and I remember, I said, well, what is this? And no noise, and uh, the, this triangle just disappeared, like, very fast. You know, and then that's why I got really interested, and I went to the to the magazine places, and I bought the UFO magazine. So mm -hmm. I started to read about it, and I said, "Wow, well, something's going on." You know, and yeah. I went to and I do a whole UFO congress around Brazil, and I used to uh, I started to go, you know, to the UFO congress. So. Then I felt really hard in my heart to investigate the case just because I want to know it. But I, I don't believe too much, like, you know, um, it's crazy. I want to go investigate. You want to know? Yeah, well, I just want to know. I mm -hmm. You got the book. Yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's crazy. Oh, <laughs> that's great. I'm glad you really looked into that and you were available to, to work with because can you imagine that you would have to learn how to speak poor, Portuguese? Most of the contact wouldn't exist without this guy. Yeah. 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 And, and his fellow researchers. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I worked my butt off too, but not like these guys. Yeah. These guys really got their boots on the ground and went after it. And when I was there, I was doing the same thing. I was, he was going there all the time. Yeah. For years. Wow. Years. Yeah. And then I had my first experience, like working with the subject with James. And then after that, uh, I met a guy, uh, Fred, and he did a show for his channel in Brazil. Like it's a series that we call the Carlos Ovnis, which is a take right with UFOs, to just to show some cases that are uh, happening in Brazil. So we shoot like 13 episodes, and then because you know James, I think he like. <laughs> He gave me the opportunity to learn a little bit about the. So I used to love to do. Uh, I mean, since uh, uh, since 2011, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and I think I love to do the same thing. Uh, this, you know. Yeah. And now he's been intimately involved with every aspect of from start to finish. He's actually coming to LA with me to see the sound design work done, to see the trailer being made. We got the. Uh, Guy that does the sound design with uh, James Cameron is doing oh. sound design for wow. Moment Contact. Wow. Top notch people, man. Just yeah. as professional as it gets. And it's so nice to see that level of, of, of treatment to a topic of your house, right? Because there's always like a mm -hmm. uh, an accepted level of production values with UFOs that I think is, you know, really needs to be stepped up. And I remember talking to you and saying that. My two, when we first met, my two favorite movies are ones that you did. And you said, well, I wish I did this, and I wish I did that. Oh, yeah. But uh, you, you, you did. You stepped it up for the phenomenon. I did, and You yeah. stepped it up for this one. Yes, yes. So, we got yeah. a great guy that we're working with, this guy, David West, who's like one of the best photographers alive. Wow. He's so into what he does, too. He's mm -hmm. so good at shooting B-roll, the beautiful B-roll that he goes after. He gets, he, he really captures an atmosphere, you know, like you would think of shots, 
We're interviewing someone. He's shooting the windows, outside the windows. During the interview, he's got four or five cameras rolling. He's got time lapses over the building. Yeah. Like, the guy is a genius. Wow. You know, and he really cares about what he does. Mm-hmm. Like, he puts so much thought and cares. As much as I care about getting the truth to UFOs and witnesses, he cares the same about photography. The guys in the sound, the guys that are composing music, these are professionals that really care. And now it's really exciting. Marco's got to see, like you, you're going to see from start to finish, from shooting to completion, all yeah. the way through. Yeah. I mean, I haven't even done that. Well, this is the first time I've done that with Boris. And Boris and I have done lots of it. But he always comes late into the show. Now, Boris, from start to finish. Oh, and you as yeah. well. You. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Oh, no. Yeah. 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 I thank you so much, though. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. I was just told there's an echo, and I'm uh, going to try to fix that as, as we go along. And I apologize if that's happening. We did a sound check in the beginning. I'm not sure uh, what, what. Well, we went live like, let's see, 6 p.m. And excuse me if the audience has been working my tailbone off all day. Um, we went live at 6 p.m., and you showed up at 5.58. So that's probably why we got an echo. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I just removed the other, in two minutes. <laughs> I just removed the other camera. So um, I'm thinking. Was that one's live still? This one is alive still, this so not live. the other one. Yeah. So I just removed the other camera. <laughs> so um, uh, hopefully, okay, everyone's saying it's way better. I'm really sorry, everyone. Um, I'm really sorry, everyone. It, it worked fine in the beginning. So it should be fine from now on without that camera. I can't believe it. Ah. Yeah. These things but, happen. We did Peter Coyote at this very table. Did you really? Just a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Oh, Peter yeah. was remote, but yeah. we had an echo too. Oh, and we did. finally figured out what it was after we did everything. We made we made it work, but we had a weird echo. Yeah, there. we've got one half hour left. So we had we an don't hour want an echo for a half, half an hour. hour. Yeah. Oh. Hour and a half of echoes. I apologize, everyone. Well, and, I, I, yeah. I wouldn't mind if it's okay with you, Martin, um, without revealing too much. I'd like to know what it was like for you to see moment of contact, even though it's, it's fairly rough. Um, well, condition. I watched it with my friend, Don in the other room. What did you know about, what did you know about the case prior? I, to I heard about the case. I would say I looked into it probably six or seven years ago. And I just remember either I read something about it and I remember mm. the creature for some reason, I thought a creature was in a tree. I mm. don't remember where I got mixed up, but, but I just remembered that there were girls that saw the creature and all this. And I thought, wow, what a weird case that is. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you, after watching the movie, there's no doubt in my mind that something really happened there. And I do. And it's funny. I was, I said this to you, you may think I was joking, but I, I felt sorry for the creature because Mm -hmm. it seemed very frail and very afraid. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's kind of what was scared. It was scared. Like, I'm stuck vulnerable. here. I'm stuck here. Yep. You know, I'm not going home. What's going to happen to me? I mean, you, of course, I'm thinking in human terms, but who knows mm. what it was thinking. But the thing was, according to the girls, acting like it was afraid. And um, but I, after listening to all the all the witnesses, um, I have no doubt. I don't have any doubt that that did happen. Mm-hmm. You know how much uh, exactly happened. If, but I mean, everything follows along. That's the reason I asked you, what are the chances that these people talked? Because mm-hmm. their stories all line up. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I thought it was great. Mm-hmm. I thought it was great. And You know, one, one uh, aspect that I learned kind of after the, after the well, uh, it's really funny, actually, because when I was in uh, Africa, when I was investigating the Rua case for the phenomenon, um, Dr. John Mack, right? Sort of following the trail, Dr. John Mack, and all that archive footage, and you know, your audience knows that story. Well, Dr. John Mack was in Virginia, and was it Ubirajara that shot shot back? Yeah, is that right? Ubirajara, yeah. Wow. And so, 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 John Mack is interviewing the girls. Yeah. Weeks after it happened, not long. Wow, it's fresh. Wow, yeah. and. and and there was something that was revealed there. And I it kind of put the pieces together. And I just didn't have the exact, the level of detail that was revealed with Dr. John Mack interview with the girls. And that is this. 
it was Liliani, I think, was leading the way. She was 16. I'm, correct yes. me if I'm wrong here. Mm -hmm. It was Liliani, her sister, Kat, uh, sorry, her sister, Valkyria, and then I believe Katya. Yeah, uh, no, walking was, together. No, yes, they were walking together. When they had the encounter with this being, Liliani, according to the interview that I just saw with Dr. John Mack, Liliani grabs the hand of her younger sister and yanks her out of there. And they're just running away from this thing, freaked out. Well, Katya, stayed they realize, back. stayed back and is frozen in her tracks. Yeah. And just staring at the eyes of this creature from like 10 feet away. Yeah. Okay. In broad daylight. They, Liliani is like, oh my God, I got to go get Katya. Liliani runs back <clears throat> and grabs Katya by the arm and yanks her out of there. Like breaks that trance. Yeah, they had some bags. In the they had some bags, and they left in the place. They left the bags. Yeah. Oh my God! So, yeah. so this was revealed. So, Dr. John Mack is going. Did you have any communication? Did you feel anything when you made eye contact with this creature? And apparently, it was exactly that. It's like, get me out of here. I'm scared yeah. mm. for my, you know, my well-being. Please help me. Wow. Help me get out of here. This place yeah. where I'm in, and he felt like he was being, I mean, like you you interpret it like he felt like he was hiding from people that wanted to do him harm. Yeah, crazy. Which did. Yeah, and I and, and and you know Katya had revealed a little of that in the interview with her. She you know that she did have this communication with the creature, but that level of detail where she was frozen in her tracks, the two other girls ran away and realized that they left her behind. Liliani runs back, grabs Katya by the arm, and yanks her out of there. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. And you know, the uh, Salma Siddiq from the Ariel's. Know her well. Yes. yes. I mean, what she said to me is that one of the hardest things she ever did in her life was to break the eye, eye contact mm -hmm. with the being she was next to. Yeah. She said she had to go find her siblings, see if they were okay. And she said, you know, four <laughs> feet away from this thing, <laughs> the hardest thing she could ever do was turn away. Yeah. I'm, I'm laughing because my dog. I hear like, the dog. It, yeah. Do you want to just go kick him in the face? I'm kidding. I'm, I'm totally kidding. <laughs> Again? Maybe, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. How could you treat a dog like that? <laughs> Jesus. He's just a Thank little you. guy. He's, to, he's defenseless he's adorable little, little alien. Dog. Come on. You, you could bring him in here. Communicate telepathically with him. Tell him to. There we go. Sorry, guys. I hear the dog. He has a little <laughs> feet. Maybe yeah. you can let him outside. Maybe he might need to do his business. Yeah. Yeah. Little Thank you. A little housekeeping here. Behind the scenes, I yeah. know. Sorry, guys. Sorry for the interruption here. No, but no, these things great. happen. Yeah, I know. We can really want to see. Can you, you but... pick the dog up? Really? Yes, do. Come here. Come here. Come on. Come here. Come on. This dog is adorable. Oh. Here he is. You have to get him in the camera. Oh, oh. You. <laughs> so cute. Okay, he probably has to go to the bathroom though. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I love. Actually, like when things like this happen. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, so, so, so James. Um, I remember, I thought I heard, I don't know if you said it yourself, but I think someone else speculated that you had tons and tons of footage from when you were doing the, the phenomenon mm. and that you might do something with that footage, more with that footage. Is that, is, are you just moving forward and doing other things or is that still a possibility or was it ever a possibility? Um, I think I was talking with someone about this the other day that at some point, point excuse me i need to make that footage available whether i share it with someone like david marler excuse me um or have a library that could be accessible to the world basically I'm, i think i'm sitting on the biggest archive of material anybody has i mean i, hmm. mu I must be I mean, if you think of all the content, video, I've been shooting, ar video archives, video archives, and, yeah. and and a lot of really good stuff, and a lot of the stuff I have is nobody else has because the people are dead. Yeah, that I got so um, to answer your question, I'm going to make it available to everybody. I just don't know exactly how I'm going to go about doing that, and also, I'm going to continue shooting new material. I feel like I have to put the pressure on more than ever before because we're at that sort of tipping point yeah. right now. Feels like it. Yeah. And yeah. then I don't want to let up. I don't want to let up. I, I've got a narrow window um, that I can ride the coattails of the success of the phenomenon, not just financially, but exposure wise and having um, yes, having access 
to people. And, yeah. uh, and so I want to, uh, that's why I'm in this barn is that I can, I can produce documentaries at a, at a, at a, at a lightning speed, uh, self-contained, not impact the family, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and just crank some, some, some films out in the coming years and really put the pressure on the government. And, and, and uh, it, that's, that's, that's what I'm going to do. What are some of the other cases like on your radar, so to speak? You know, you mentioned the one <coughs> Mar Marco Sorry. talked about in the Amazon. Calaris, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's certainly on the radar right now. Mm. But I, I, I think I'd like to go to Washington, D.C. for a while mm. and start answering and ask some questions. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I think yeah. that's probably going to be my next move. And I'll do that soon. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And you're not, you're in proximity. You're, I am. I could closer. drive, I could drive there in yeah. eight hours. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. And set up camp there for a while. Yeah. But I'll, I'll make some arrangements ahead of time for it. But that's probably my next move. Interesting. Because uh, I uncovered certain things we did. We uncovered certain things in moment of contact that lead us back to the United States, mm -hmm. evidence wise. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to, and as well as other evidence stuff that I know exists. Um, All right. Let's well, speaking on, on this particular topic. Do you think that our government or segmented part of our government is containing this and one, this type of information they've been gathering in one specific area? And if so, how is it generational? In other words, we're going way back. Um, do you think that's a possibility or do you think it's in the private sector, pushed into the private sector somehow? Well, I mean, it would be free from oversight if it wasn't the right. private sector, yeah. so that would make sense. Yeah, but I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I but I mean, you I think you think of like the Big Sur, the missile, you know, yeah, that that thing. Whenever that happened, yeah. way back then, mm -hmm. and all these things. And and uh, um, you talked to Gordon Cooper's film. Mm -hmm. You think of all these things that have and the bricks off of the data bricks off of the Princeton. Yeah. Oh know, my God. All over this stuff over, is over, going like, somewhere. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And um, would you speculate, again, I'm asking for speculation, that it's going to the same place, or do you think that it's, it's divvied up or something? I just don't know. Yeah. I wish I did know. Yeah. But I, I did, you know, in 2009, when I was doing, uh, 2008, 2009, I was doing, I know what I saw. Yeah. And I was broke. To the point where you're so, you, you know, you ever been so broke you can't barely afford to pay attention? I was like <laughs> right there, right? And my my uh, my supporters that you know, because you get financial support. Some people have a lot of money. Some people have little money. They you know they support you, and then it just drags on. And they're like, oh, yeah, God, we're done here. I'm not gonna keep you keep saying you know. And uh, and I was at that point with the I know what I saw, and so I was doing. Uh, some production work on the side in San Diego. And I worked with this woman wanted to hire me to do a documentation of her husband's life. He was about, I think he was turning 90, 80 or 90. And um, so I agreed to do it. And I got all of his lifespan of stuff from the 20s all the way, you know. And uh, she says, no, oh, it's very interesting. So James, what do you do when you're not working on, you know? And I was like, oh boy, here we go. <laughs> so I told her, she goes, oh, my gosh, that's fascinating. You know, can I share something with you? I love that when that And happens. I said, yeah, and her name will come to me in a minute. It, secret. It'll come to me. But in any case, she said, when I was in college, back in, I think she said it was the 50s, but it could have been the 60s. She said, my, uh, there was, a, there was a, a, a guy, either it was across the dorm from her, but it was, uh, General Nathan Twining's son. Oh, wow. That's what she told me. Okay. Yeah. She said that he came and were having drinks with her and her roommate one night in their dorm room. Uh -huh. She knew the guy was still alive. She tried, she tried to track him down for me. But anyway, she came over and he said to her and her roommate that he was taking, his dad took him on a tour underground of the Pentagon and that they had a room filled with photographic evidence of UFOs. Mm. And he told her this back in the late 50s or the early 60s, and that he had personally seen it through his father. Wow. 
She's like, I've been holding on to that story for 50 years. Wow. Like, Nathan, Nathan Twining memo. Nathan Read that, look that up. Twining's son. Yeah. I'm 99.9% .9 sure it was Nathan Twining's son. Yeah, because I remember I remember thinking like, oh yeah, he would definitely be in a position to know. But anyway, yeah. So she's he, I mean, why would he, you know, yeah. having a few drinks, trying impressing the girls, but and they, they weren't interested in UFOs. They yeah. didn't even ask him about it. Why would he bring it up? He volunteered out of the that information that there was a there was a repository, but underground. He said underground to her. Yeah. That's what she told me. It was underground and hidden down below in the Pentagon. And it was filled with evidence of UFOs. So yeah, you, I didn't say anything about bodies or that yeah. or, or didn't want to push the it. No, well, yeah. no, she didn't tell me that part. Yeah. She said photographic and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so if this, if that would be the case, wouldn't you think that could be investigated by the, the task force task force they're putting together? You know, I mean, one of the things I heard about that is they didn't want to look into anything before 2004 or something like that because of the data not being specifically, you know, uh, high end. What was the name of that guy that wrote a book recently? His name, I, I went on Larry King live. No, I went on Larry King now with him. And he was based in Washington, D.C. And in his book, he talks about, his book was not about UFOs. Oh. Brandon Chase. Yes, Brandon Chase. Brandon Chase. That was kind of a bizarre story, whether it was true yeah. or not. I think it was true. I talked yeah. to him. I went on Larry King now with him. You can look you did. Up. Yeah. Yes, I did. Yeah. And I talked to him about it. He said, I wasn't, but I was in the Pentagon as well. And he opened up a box and he found, he said, he found evidence on Roswell. And I said, okay, well, what did you see? He goes, 100% confirmation that it happened. And he wrote it in his book. He just mentioned it in his book. Of course, nobody wanted to know about anything else other than that aspect yeah. of what he mentioned in his book. So you talked to him personally. Oh, yeah. You met him and talked to I him personally. I did not meet him in person. I talked to oh. him on the phone. Oh, I see. And I wanted, and I said, hey, let's get together for a beer in, in, in D.C. Mm-hmm. You know, after we did the show together, he goes, oh, yeah, that'd be great. So like, I don't know, eight months later, I was in D.C. Wouldn't call me back. Mm. So let's get, let's get together for that beer we talked about. I wanted to know what he saw. But I mean, I, I thought so it was I, kind of, don't you think it's kind of rare that a box would be marked Roswell? I don't know Instead if it was of marked, case I don't know if it was marked Roswell. Oh, I, I see. All he right. just said he was digging through some stuff and he came upon a box that had photographic <laughs> evidence. I said, well, what did you see? He goes... He goes, definitive evidence that it happens. So basically is what he said. Yeah. And now, uh, the guy didn't seem like he was lying. Yeah. He really didn't. Yeah. He wasn't out there selling that. It was just one little footnote in his book. I don't know, man. But you would think that that would be part of an investigation if they actually have this information. Or do you think that they're not making it accessible? To anyone. Well, clearly they're not making it accessible to anyone. I mean, you know, even in talked, the government is what I mean. Well, we talk, well, yeah. yeah, they do. I mean, you know, we talked about uh, the the Clinton administration's efforts to go after Roswell, yep. and that they did not like the answers they were getting. Hmm. They were not happy with the answers they were getting. They were getting the runaround. Stephen Schiff talked about that. You know, the Clinton administration people talked about it. Jimmy Carter talked about that. Gerald Ford kind of talked about that, hmm. you know. When I talked to Christer, uh, Chris Mellon about this, he said that um, that know, if a if a president, he said to me that if a president would ask, I want to know about aliens or whatever, that they would give him all the information that they had. Hmm. That's what he he claimed, you know. When I talked to him in two thousand sixteen, well, funny actually, because one of the things that, that Mr. Mellon and I uh came to the realization of during the making of the phenomenon when i met with him is that i was interviewing in the 90s uh gordon cooper about that landing case in edwards air force base circa 1957 right and that film footage that was handed over well paralleling that time my interviews with cooper cooper went to the white house and i guess shared that with the, with the president shared that with his people and so christopher mellon was tasked with going after that footage, that landing footage. Really? Yeah, he talks wow. about it a little bit in the phenomenon. Yeah. He went after it. And they said, oh, yeah, we just, the Air Force plane said, oh, yeah, we destroyed all that evidence. We had to make space for news. So it was like, oh, yeah. please. You know? <laughs> yeah. So it's interesting that Christopher Mellon was going after that specific footage. 
Yeah. Uh, in, in t- when he was in, in, you know, in somewhat of an official capacity, I'd imagine, because he was he was working. Was yeah. He Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Intelligence at the time. I guess it was like the late '90s or something. Yeah. 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 All interesting. We have about four minutes left, and so I asked at one point. I said, and you said you sort of have an idea what's going on with your with this film. Mm-hmm. Uh, a moment of contact. Yes. Um, We're going to LA next week. Yeah. Finalizing the sound mix. Mm-hmm. Uh, the music is, is, is going to be done at that same time. And then we turn the film in and it's ready to be broadcast. But it rolls out. So we'll probably deliver the film complete at the, at the end of May. Really? That soon? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, in a few weeks. Yeah. The film's done. I mean, yeah. you know, we've got like, a few spelling corrections and things of that sort of commas and yeah punctuation and that sort of thing yeah um that we're i've got a couple of copy editors working on it as we speak because i'm terrible at that so is boris um and and then uh, we turn it in probably end of may early june and then uh 1091 will set the release date the trailer's being made as we speak okay. Rudy jones yeah. in hollywood we're going to go see that too uh those announcements will be made probably early to mid june great and, and I that'll be uh yeah. and then the trailer will be released at that time mm-hmm. and then the film will come out usually it takes two to three months prep to roll it out yeah excellent well i'm definitely going to let people know on this show so and i'll have that up on the web website and everything yeah else. you know we can we can out. do a quick follow-up yeah. thing when it's ready yeah you know just to update your, your audience yeah that sounds good but as as lou elizondo said Brace yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Where's my phone? I want to play that. Can I play that real quick? Do we have enough time? You got to hear this. Oh, yeah. We got to hear this. this. Is great. Yeah. No, this is Lou Elizondo responding to the film. And you can somebody. hold it right up here to the mic or yep, toward I'll the mic. I'll do that. I'll do yeah. that. I'll do yeah. that. Let yeah. me turn this on. How long, Marco, how long have you been here in the United States? Um, for for this time, seems October. Wow. Right? Yeah. So wow. it's been six yeah. months. Yeah. So what do you think of winter? <laughs> oh, it's very cold here. Very oh cold. my god. Yeah, I bet you weren't ready for that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Oh, he handled it like a champ. Yeah. <laughs> he was great. Here we go. Yeah. Well, this is Lou Elizondo commenting on a podcast just a couple of days last week or something. Oh. Well, we think it's uh, yeah, it is. It's on your speakers. Here we go. About abductees. We're talking about people that have just been in the middle of the road and right here. Uh, yeah. 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 Fox comes out with his next movie. I mean, brace yourself. It's, really? it's, it's, it's going to shake you. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, it, it's going to shake you. It, he's, 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 he's got a, he's done a tremendous job of, you know, James Fox is, uh, he did the, uh, recent movie, The Phenomenon. Yeah. Well, he's got a, 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 another one coming out. Uh, he spent a lot of time in, in a certain country, uh, collecting data, very compelling data, eyewitness testimony, military intelligence, whatnot. Um, excellent. You know, One second. Wait, wait till that right. comes out. Anyway, excellent. That's great. We are totally out of time. Oh, Thank okay. you so much. Thanks for having me. Thank on, you Martin. both. I really appreciate yeah, thank it. Thank you guys. Thank All right. You so much. And I got to switch over here since I only have one camera. I don't know how it's going to happen. But thank you everyone, and we'll be back next week with Preston Dennett. And remember to keep your eyes to the sky.